This video is brought to you by Ghouls. Purple M and M's, the M and M's are trans. The M and M's are trans. They're making them. They're making the candies transgender. It's Happy Halloween. It's the Halloween episode because it's about candy. That's the, that's the, there. I justified it. Welcome to the Dark Spook Halloween Slime Tacula. This video may be quite scary for some, as it contains discussion of transphobia, not to be confused with Transylvania. Also, homophobia and hate speech. Containing two separate phobias, what could be more Halloween than this? Blay! Thanks, Dracula. Regular viewers of this program will know that I have very strong opinions about the sexual politics of M&Ms. I have previously discussed how the Mars Wrigley Corporation, a subsidiary of Nintendo, have used focused, targeted nonsense about making the M&Ms inclusive to distract from how they got sued for Allegedly. Using a bunch of child slaves and the ways that our venal, cowardly, absurd media ecosystem plays along with that tiresome agenda. Well, folks, they done did it again. Say hello to the purple M&M. Purple, by the way, it's the gay color. It's a color that's gay. Do you expect me to believe they used the color purple because it was the only color left in the rainbow they hadn't used? I don't think so. It's obviously because it's the gay color. And here's the purple M&M herself saying a bunch of shit about self-acceptance and her song is all about being herself, like a trans person would be. I'm just gonna be me, nothing else I can be but a purpley peanut shaped chocolate candy. She's really peanut shaped. Loving and accepting oneself? Only a trans could have such sick thoughts. The chorus of the song goes, I'm just gonna be me, and then the other M&Ms go, she's just gonna be she. I'm just gonna be me. Need I remind you? Because it's been a while since primary school, but the word she is a pronoun, believe it or not. That's right, pronouns, like trans people use. You expect me to believe they just put that line in because it rhymes? Because it enforces the theme of the song? I don't think so. This is clearly gender ideology. Now, mind you, the, they never said that the Eminem is trans, and uh, that's all of the evidence for this claim. So let's review. Here's how we know that the purple M&M is trans. It's a trans M&M because one, purple is gay and gay something, something trans people. Two, the M&M likes herself and encourages inclusivity because in our woke, twisted culture, it's apparently a good thing when people feel included or get to be themselves. Well, what about my freedom? my freedom to repress my feelings and the feelings of others. And three, the other M&Ms reference her as a she, which is the girl word. And sometimes girls are trans. Pretty airtight, I think you'll agree. Take it away, some guy from One America News. M&Ms, you know, the candy we all grew up eating? Well, they released their brand new character in over a decade, and the brand new character is Purple M&M, which is supposed to represent inclusivity and acceptance. I think it's a female character, but I'm pretty sure they haven't said. Maybe it's transgender. Mm hmm, mm hmm, yes, I'm convinced. They're practically putting estrogen in our children's Halloween buckets. What do you try very hard to say without stumbling over your mealy mouthed words, Elijah Schaefer? I'm Elijah Schaefer. The story is a bit interesting. I'd say it's a little melty. M&M's is just one of the major corporate brands that is moving into a full-blown wokeness as corporate and media giants all rush out to woke one another. Woke one and another. Okay, this is a silly story. Who knew chocolate candies could be trans? M&M's about to get broke going woke. <laughs> Got <he. laughs> M&M's are reaching for a new level of wokeness as they introduce a new purple M&M who's intent on promoting inclusivity and acceptance. Hmm, good point. Well said. You seem very credible, and your earpiece is definitely plugged into something. And I think it's very appropriate that your video about the cartoon mascot you've arbitrarily decided is transgender propaganda is interrupted twice 
to sell people scam shit to protect them from the, quote, coming dark ages, end quote, which will result from the failure of, as you claim, the American energy grid falling from Vladimir Putin's cyber attacks that he is taking right now, this very second. But as serious as this threat is, I think the experts predicting it are dead wrong. I don't think the Russians are planning an attack on our power grid. I think the attack has already begun, and I have undeniable proof the trap is set. If you don't act now, it's going to be too late. But for some reason, even though the, the, the whole grid is in imminent danger of collapse, the goods that you're going to sell me on the internet will still arrive somehow. You know, it's almost like, it's almost like, it's almost like, it's almost like you're using the appearance of a salacious news story to drive people to buy your weird scam bullshit. Very important update to this story. The way that you protect your family from the energy grid going down is by using household goods to construct a new infinite energy source that this guy Paul Grabowski, who's a professional plumber, discovered called an infinity coil. And the government doesn't want you to know about the infinity coil. It's made from like tinfoil and shit because it powers all of their fighter jets. So, you know, pretty credible stuff. No explicit references to sexuality are made, but the purple character has long eyelashes, typically associated with the female Eminem characters, and wears white combat boots. Oh, the candy got eyelashes? Girls have eyelashes. Boys don't have eyelashes. The light seals the deal for me. Yeah, girls, as we all know, are the sex gender, and anything feminine is inherently sexual, in contrast to masculinity, which is, of course, normal. And she's wearing combat boots? Clearly intending to defy gender expectations. I mean, have you ever seen a woman wearing Doc Martens? I don't think so. They're just encouraging their impressionable audience to wear the transgender shoes. Side note, both Schaefer and the Daily Wire articles, which he's getting most of his quote-unquote information from, the Daily Wire, of course, did some serious big boy journalism about the candy genders, they both complained that you can't even get the purple M&M in regular M&M bags, and Schaefer speculates that this will make the fans outraged. Although this corporate virtue signaling is meant to create unity, some fear that it will cause outrage. Jane Hawang, global vice president of M&M, said the new character will appear in stores and the M&M's website and on some limited edition packaging and customers will be able to buy purple M&M's online, an option that was already available. But when it comes to a regular bag of peanut M&M's, purple fans are out of luck. That could be a new source of outrage. And I don't think it will because all every color of M&M tastes the same. It's the same thing, but with different food colorings. How unlike the right to care so very much about color. If you're a fan of M&M's, if you're in the M&M fandom, you know that you can, you can get the purple M&M's from the website if that's important to you for some reason. At this point in the video, I would just like to mention that I am going to die someday. So then why am I spending valuable minutes of my finite lifespan on what is probably the most absolutely brain-dead manufactured controversy I've ever seen attempted by the Griftosphere? This really didn't even provoke that much backlash. They kind of just threw this one out there to see if it stuck, you know, because they just do a million things. Every step ladders are trans now. And of course it didn't. So, you know, why even, why even bring it up? And aside from the fact that it's like really fucking funny to me, th yeah, that's a fair question. Because I've been thinking a lot lately about the approach I use on this channel. It certainly feels good to mock people we disagree with, but I don't know if it's helpful. I don't know if it convinces anyone, and I worry that it makes people dig their heels in, that people who disagree might feel attacked or condescended to. I would prefer to have an adult, respectful conversation. Unfortunately, that is no longer possible because the opinions of people like Elijah Schaefer or whoever that guy from What American News is have become so unfathomably dumb, so utterly and completely absurd, so divorced from any and all connection to the real world, that to respond to them with anything but mockery is dishonest. I could not pretend to take opinions like these seriously. As condescending as it may appear to mock them, it is the closest thing to respect I can provide to these people. To take these opinions seriously would be to condescend. To treat the people who spout these ideas as though they're not intelligent enough to realize on their own how inane what they're saying actually is. Conservatives now think of trans people as literal boogeymen, boogie women and non-boogery people. They see a company make some hollow, vague gesture about inclusivity or acceptance or whatever nice sounding buzzword lets them pretend like their products provide some kind of cultural value to you so you can associate their shitty candy with good feelings and they get scared and start accusing random people or candies of being secret transes out to hypnotize and sissify us all. It's a full-on moral panic, but unlike moral panics of the past, it does feel like in this particular case, it is a moral panic being performed. 
everyone involved seems to know that it's silly, but they know it'll hurt the people they don't like. And just outright stating their position, which is that trans people should be excised from society, would make them look like monsters, because they are. Not in the fun Halloween way, in the bad, not fun, mass murder way. So okay, yeah, I guess chocolates are trans now. That's what we're talking about. What one American newsman is saying... Look, I don't want to look up his name. Can we all agree that it, I, it's not important that I learn his name? I'm just going to call him Jeff Underwear, okay? I'm going to assume his name is Jeff Underwear. What Mr. Underwear is saying, without saying, by claiming that the purple M&M must be trans, is that these days, so much media caters to the whims of trans people that one could just reasonably expect that some random commercial about a piece of chocolate singing about how she doesn't feel the need to be nervous when going on stage must be an allegory for that piece of chocolate's struggle with self-identity and gender expression. If we swallow this type of horseshit uncritically, the lack of evidence for Jeff's headcanon, therefore, strengthens his argument rather than weakening it as it should. It implies that the type of outreach marketing he has imagined is targeting trans people and their allies here is so common that one can safely assume it is present even when the evidence is flimsy or outright contradictory. Whether or not it is true is irrelevant. It just feels like it could be true, doesn't it? And that says something about society these days, doesn't it? Something, something woke. And if you do that one time, it's very silly. Each case in isolation is very silly. But if you do it a lot, if you make this kind of argument all the time, it kind of starts to feel like there's a pattern. The more often they suggest there's some insidious trans propaganda where there definitely isn't, the more difficult it becomes to dispute their narrative, no matter how flimsy each individual example they give is. The point of Jeff Underwear's claim that the purple M&M is trans isn't to convince anyone that the M&M is trans. That doesn't matter to literally anyone. It's enough for him that his audience believes she could be. And the more we try to dispute the argument, the more room underwear has to start listing other absurd transphobic claims to back it up, which, when taken in aggregate, might be enough to plant the seed of doubt in an otherwise normal-pilled person's brain. Think of it this way. If I wanted to claim that the media was intentionally manipulating people into liking elephants, I could present the same amount of evidence and type of evidence that conservatives do about so-called gender ideology. I could point out how there are documentaries, cartoons, toys, major motion pictures about elephants. I mean, why focus on elephants so much? They only represent like 0.001% of all animals. I've never seen a movie about a copybara. They're way cuter than elephants. What's the deal with that? Hey, you ever notice that the elephant is the symbol of the Republican Party? Right there. See, they're virtue signaling their support for the elephant agenda. I'm so sick of everything I'd watch on TV showing elephant messaging and shoving it down my throat like you watch a basketball game. Everyone's tall, like elephants. You can't get away from it. Ridiculous, right? Like all of those things are obviously explainable, but by listing them all at once, it would force any opponent of my made up position to go on the defensive. And no matter how quickly they debunk my talking points, I can always come up with more examples of elephants in things or things with elephant-like qualities that are just generally around. It's always quicker to make up nonsense than to make sense. And by arguing with me, they've not only brought attention to my wacky fringe ideas, allowing me to plant the seed of doubt in their audience's mind, but they've also kind of validated that my points are worth refuting, that a reasonable person might believe my ideas, and therefore, it is worth someone's time to explain that the elephant's cabal is not real. That elephant example feels sillier than them doing the literal exact same thing with trans people, because you haven't been primed to think of people who like elephants as deceptive schemers. But this is how transphobes have conditioned people to view trans people. The more they deny this type of hateful rhetoric, the more it kind of gives the impression that there must be something to it. Everybody's talking about it. It's like if you're at a party and some guy's going around telling everybody that you like to piss your pants, which we can assume for the sake of argument that you do not. If you start every conversation with somebody by telling them, hey, by the way, just so you know, don't believe the rumors that I like to piss my pants. I don't like to piss my pants. No matter how spurious that rumor may be, no matter what kind of evidence you might present that you do not, in fact, like to piss your pants, it's going to make people start to think maybe you piss your pants a little bit because you, you sure talk about it a lot. And now you're not allowed to go to the punch bowl because everybody thinks you're just trying to fill your bladder so you can intentionally piss your pants. And I guess in this analogy, the punch bowl represents gender affirming healthcare, which is a pretty insensitive comparison to make. But the point I'm trying to make here is that I don't like to piss my pants. Stop telling people I like to piss my pants, Kevin. So like, why would I respond to this with anything but mockery? 
what, what do I have to gain? All I can do is make their position look serious by taking it seriously. At the same time, I think you can't just mock them. You have to point out what they're actually saying. Everyone focuses on the silly part, the trans m and m and they ignore the bigoted assumptions that are established to lead to that silly conclusion. Notice how Elijah Schaefer frames this point. It isn't that Mars Wrigley, a subsidiary of Sega, decided to do this. They were forced to, compelled, against their will to obey the dictates of some erstwhile tyrants. That means to spend the sig send the signal that we're only doing this to appease the liberal 1% so they don't cancel the candy online and yet keep the purple from the stores where people av would avoid buying the woke candy. Good move, Mars Candy. Why, it's the woke mob, you see. The woke mob controls how Mars Wrigley, a subsidiary of Capcom, makes their commercials. If there isn't a trans in one, oh boy, are you going to hear about it? Because you know who fucking loves this shit? You know who fucking loves when companies make cowardly hand-wavy gestures, which suggests support for LGBTQ plus rights without actually stating that support in a time when LGBTQ plus people are under increased scrutiny and threats of violence and fearful for their civil liberties? The woke mob love it. They live for that shit. Every day, I, an extremely woke moralist, log on to Twitter, tweet some new pronouns that I just made up for no reason, and then I read tweet after tweet of people begging hubba bubba to clarify their official position on whether or not men can get pregnant. I will not buy hubba bubba products until this issue has been resolved. And while we're all wasting our time pointing out how this example is silly sauce garbage made to waste our time, he successfully smuggled in the idea that of course the media has some pro-trans agenda, and of course that's sinister and bad. The transes and trans likers are controlling all of the commercials and hardworking candies are being forced to sing songs they don't even believe in. This is just a bog standard conspiracy theory. He's saying there's some nebulous group of people forcing commercials to contain messaging about inclusivity and acceptance and thus, through some truly wild leaps in logic, normalizing trans people somehow. Even though they're not in the commercial or talked about. That's the insidious plot here, by the way. It's normalizing trans people. If the candies are trans, then people might feel safe to be. That's the bad thing that they're afraid might happen. This particular conspiracy theory is called the trans agenda, itself a subcategory of the broader conspiracy theory, the gay agenda, which has come to include many types of people who we would not necessarily typically call gay. This kind of messaging feeds into the idea that whatever type of queerness they're targeting this week, in this case trans people, are a sort of social contagion that by knowing that trans people even exist, somehow, cis people who otherwise would have led perfectly cis lives, content with their assigned gender, will arbitrarily decide to become trans for no reason. And also, that it would be a big problem if they did that. It would be a problem for you. Rich and powerful global elites want to spread that infection far and wide for reasons that are never quite clear. So they use their limitless resources to vaguely hint at transness, but not actually acknowledge it or show it directly, which feels to me like it would be more effective towards that goal. And I think it goes without saying at this point that, like all conspiracy theories, it's usually packaged with anti-Semitism, because, you know, when right-wingers talk about elites who control the media, like, guess who they think that is? Can you guess? Now, obviously, none of that is to say that any of these people are necessarily personally anti-Semitic. Just that they constantly gleefully lay the groundwork upon which anti-Semitism flourishes. It's pretty funny to me that implicit in this claim is a sort of admission that there's something alluring to the prospect of transition. You can't imagine the general population hearing about the existence of trans people for the first time without a significant portion of them immediately wanting to transition. It's just inherently compelling to want to change your assigned gender. So we can't let people know it's an option or they're going to want to do it. But also, even though people just naturally will be compelled to do it, it's still somehow unnatural and nobody would ever think of it on their own. When they're feeling particularly shitheaded, and they usually are, they'll make the argument that in addition to being this sort of social contagion, that the existence of trans people or whatever type of queer people they're targeting will somehow be used to coerce people into sex. Every aspect of gender nonconformity, no matter how chaste, is portrayed as inherently sexual. Asking to be called by a different pronoun? That's a sex act. Wearing a dress if you were assigned male at birth? You just had sex with every single person who saw you in that dress. Asking people not to treat you as a sex object? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you wanted to be a woman. The sex gender. All of those assumptions, all of those preconceived ideas are just smuggled into the conversation and then hidden behind the extremely silly concept of the secret trans m and Sorry, libs, you might deny the m and is trans, but you gotta admit, it seems like the type of thing the woke mob would make them do. Which brings us, unfortunately, to the alleged comedic stylings 
of the Babylon Bee. The bee, which is like the onion if it was conservative instead of funny, eerily predicted this scandal because, of course they did, these dipshits were always ready to manufacture this scandal. Their fictional trans m and is even purple, the gay color. As part of a bold new marketing strategy to promote inclusivity and appeal to less than 1% of the population, Mars Incorporated has introduced a new m and character who identifies as a Skittle. Wow, okay, yeah, all right. So inclusivity, by definition, includes people. That's what the word means. So if you wanted to do that, you would in fact have to include small minority groups. And 1% of the population of the United States, by the way, is 3.29 million people, and that would be a pretty significant market share, I would say. But of course, affirming trans people wouldn't simply market to trans people, it would also be outreach marketing for the people who support trans rights, which is most people, you fucking goons. I'm going to be honest here, we basically are just doing this because it's hip and makes us look cool, says Mars Incorporated CEO Franklin Crunchy. And that adds to the bottom line. I think we can make a decent fortune by comparing the hardships of real trans people to a wacky cartoon character. Fucking got him. Got him. The advertisement is just trying to make their product look good, so you'll buy it. Nice try, libs. Hey, uh, Babylon B, if you're looking for a genuine work of art that captures the nuances of the trans experience, you probably wouldn't start by looking at M&M commercials. Notice also how the bee is covering their ass here, like the cowards they are. They're throwing in some language about how the thing they're mad at here is the appropriation of trans struggles to sell products, which I know is not what they're mad about because it didn't happen. They made that up as a joke. As though they're not the ones demeaning trans people, it's the hypothetical marketing campaign they imagined would happen that demeans trans people. That's, they're the ones doing it. And how dare you use the suffering of trans people to sell candy? You should only use the suffering of trans people to make jokes which directly contribute to that suffering. The new character named Quinn is an M&M &M that wears an S because they haven't had letter reassignment surgery yet. Pause for laughter, pause for laughter. On the inside, Quinn has the same chocolate taste because it isn't able to change anything but its outward appearance. Now imagine Quinn, the Skittle who has a human name for some reason, even though none of the other characters in the M&M CU have human names, could take medication that'd make him taste like a Skittle, but he wasn't allowed to get it because a bunch of M&Ms decided that changing into a Skittle is bad somehow even though Skittles are the objectively superior candy, do not at me. The satire here, in case you missed the very subtle joke they're trying to make, is that trans people likewise apparently cannot change anything but their outward appearance, which is not true. They can absolutely change, for example, their endocrine system. Men and women are made of most of the same stuff. There's not a, there's not, if you were to bite into one of us, you wouldn't notice a, a huge difference. Meat and blood and lungs, I think, is in there. It's mostly the same, is my point. And the parts that aren't can be altered to be. Not one-to-one -one necessarily, but there's variability within how closely cis people of the same gender match the typical biological markers of their sex. All of which is beside the point because Skittle and m, &M are not social categories that come with them, a set of mutually exclusive expectations and norms. m ms and Skittles are not expected to behave differently. They do not ask to be treated differently. They do not experience distress at being mistaken for one or the other, or violent exclusion should they fail to live up to their assigned role. What would it mean for an assigned m, &M at birth person to identify as a Skittle? Is the problem here that you'd end up eating an m, &M that you thought was a Skittle? Because the candies don't want to get eaten, that's not the candy's fault. In this analogy, are Skittles girls and M&M's boys? Is that the joke? Why are you calling Quinn it? How far into this article did you get before you realized that the joke kind of falls apart if you acknowledge that the candy mascots are all already gendered? as indeed are almost all fictional characters. We just want to let the trans community know that m and supports you and wants your money, said the Mars CEO. Oh boy, I'm starting to think the only reason they made this m and commercial is to sell m and ms The LGBTQ plus community took to Twitter to ask why there isn't a Latinx m and m Do better, tweeted user at I hate myself. The whole LGBTQ plus community did? All of them? Because I thought for sure some of them wouldn't have internet access. At the very least, some of them wouldn't have Twitter accounts. 
boy, it's almost like what you did there was collapse an entire diverse group of people into a stereotype based on how you think they'd react in a fictional scenario. It's almost like, it's almost like, it's almost like your tendency to collapse groups of people into stereotypes is so strong that you can't help but do it without even noticing. Hey, so which is it, by the way? Are the Mars Wrigley Corporation, a subsidiary of Konami, only marketing to trans people because they're cynically calculating that it'll make them more money, even though you also simultaneously believe that the market they're appealing to is vanishingly small? Or are they being bullied into greater and greater displays of wokeness by the entire LGBTQ plus community on Twitter? Which is it? Pick one hateful narrative and stick to it next time. But the fictional trans M&M and the fictional M&M that is real but fictionally trans, yeah, uh, are in fact crass commercialist marketing ploys. Most commercials are pretty commercialist when you get down to it. In no way do we have to give it to Mars Wrigley, a subsidiary of Blizzard Activision. And again, I can't stress this part enough, alleged child slavers. Nor under any circumstances do we have to hand it to the bee for observing this, because obviously the thing they're actually satirizing here isn't the insincerity of brands supporting trans rights. The joke they are making, quite clearly, is that being trans itself is ridiculous. It's like calling an M&M &M a Skittle. Two things which could in no way be confused for one another. They're two completely different multicolored hard-shelled candies sold in the same size bags and made of most of the same constituent ingredients because they're both mostly just sugar. But one's chocolate. Get, what, are you going to see a chocolate Skittle next? Whoops, that exact product exists, you lamentable buttholes. The reason the bee is quick to point out that this is a marketing decision instead of genuine support is to play into the same narrative about how, these days, support for trans people is so ubiquitous, you'll see it everywhere. Next, they're going to make the M&Ms trans. Be on the lookout for that one. Watch them. Watch them real close. Be on guard for that. Look, look, everybody. It happened, probably. They predicted the future. It just got goes to show how predictable the people controlling the narrative are. You can't make this up, folks. Except, yes, you can. You did. You did make it up. And then you made it up again and pretended it was real. I've been saying throughout this video that purple is the gay color. Purple, more specifically lavender, has been considered the gay color for over a century and change. You might be familiar with terms like the lavender scare, where McCarthyism witch hunted for secret gays in the media. I was not taught that in school. You might also know that participants at the Stonewall riot wore lavender sashes. I was not taught that in school. I learned that purple was the gay color when homophobes kicked up a big stink about the purple Teletubby, Tinky Winky, being gay. Tinky Winky, the Teletubby, they said, is, is, is gay. And uh, that's a problem for you. He carried a purse and he had a triangle on his head, which they tastelessly compared to the pink triangle gay people had to wear in Nazi concentration camps. And given that the target demo for the Teletubbies were toddlers who could not yet speak, I think that if that were true, the symbolism might be lost on them. Then, like now, the actual substance of the claim was irrelevant. It didn't matter that obviously Tinky Winky was not gay propaganda, but it allowed them to smuggle into the conversation that this was the thing gay people would be likely to try to do. And that so much as seeing a gay color or shape would somehow prime children to become gay to whip their base into hysterics about the manipulative, behind-the-scenes queers brainwashing our youth. The aim then, as now, was to erase the idea of queerness from the public consciousness, to remove it from the public eye so that people would not know it was an option. Remember, in their minds, upon learning that queerness exists, the average Joe is just going to run out into the streets, fully nude, looking to have the most hardcore gay sex they can find. I saw a triangle on TV, and now I need a dude to s*** my own into my own to achieve their goals, therefore, it is necessary to remove queer people from the public. If merely seeing a queer person or just the suggestion of a queer person on TV is enough to brainwash people, to brainwash children, to groom them, no less, what do you think happens when people meet queer people in real life? So to sum up, I am saying, in all seriousness, that these people, pretending a candy mascot is trans in the current political climate, carries with it the implicit call to genocide. The genocide is the only solution to the problem of performatively woke candy commercials. That's, that's what human lives are worth now. Pretty scary stuff. Happy Halloween. Thanks again to Ghouls for sponsoring this video. Head on down to the graveyard to get 10% of your flesh devoured with coupon code SLIME. Also, no eyeball zone this time. This video was spooky enough on its own. I could, I could not bear to make it spookier, also I ran out of time. Why not like and subscribe and all that shit? And also, I have t-shirts at ThoughtSlimeShop.com. You probably wear shirts.
If you like spooky videos, I have a whole channel called Scaredy Cats at youtube.com slash scaredycatstv. So all of the videos there are spooky. Go watch those. In conclusion, Halloween.